And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come see our journey today at Death Valley National Park. Or something. <laughs> Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already done so. At this adventure, like we said, we're headed for Death Valley National Park. Death Valley National Park is about two hours and nine minutes from the Las Vegas Strip. That's about 120 miles, or 193 kilometers if you prefer. On this day, it's a very windy, cool day in Death Valley. They look like ants. <laughs> Death Valley has 3,373,063 acres. So today we have chosen to spend most of our time at the Old Harmony Borax Works. Old Harmony Borax Works. Registered landmark 773 in California. Borax was the white gold of the desert and ranks as the Death Valley's most profitable mineral. Harmony operated from 1883 to 1888. With a short walk up a windy hill, we come across the refining plant. The refining process was a simple but time-consuming process. Workers heated water in boiling tanks using the steam boiler that you can still see to this day. Looks like a boiler. Was left. When carbonated soda was added, the borax would dissolve and the mud and the lime would settle out. They put the borax into cooling vats where it would crystallize on hanging metal rods. They chipped the crystal off of the rods to produce concentrated borax. Oh, that's just a boiler, that's all. Since the borax had to travel 165 miles across the desert, it made more sense to process it at this plant than to carry the waste and the borax all the way that entire route. San Francisco businessman William T. Coleman built this plant to refine cotton ball type borax found on nearby salt flats. Stabilization of the Harmony Borax Works was made possible in part by a donation from the Death Valley 40 Miners, or oh, 49ers Association in 1975. By walking the hill up above, you can look down into the vats and see the way that they processed the borax as they were refining it. Borat's salt minerals were deposited in ancient lake beds. Water dissolved the borats and carried them to the floor of the Death Valley where they crystallized as borax. Borax has been used by many trades for its cleaning properties. Chinese workers were brought from San Francisco to scrape the borax off the salt flats and carry it by wagon to the refinery. The workers received a dollar thirty per day and also had to use that money for food and lodging. For more than a century, the 20 Mule Team has been the symbol of the borax industry. The 20 Mule Team can be seen on 
product labels, in history books, and even television. Mule Teams help solve the most difficult task. These wheels are just about five feet, maybe about four and a half feet in diameter. This one's definitely five feet, this one here. Yeah. It's about four and a half. So if I come over here, this one's definitely a lot bigger. It's definitely over five feet in diameter. Yeah. The mule team traveled only two miles per day. It required 30 days to complete a round trip. In the 1920s, the area was the number one producer of borax in the world. So just as Randy mentioned, here's the boiler tanks and the crystallizing vats. The inclined plane water tank was all up here. And there's the boiler. They didn't operate it during the summer. Well, that's because it's so hot. Of 1913, the temperature hit 134 degrees Fahrenheit or 56 degrees Celsius. Here and over here. Crude shelters and tents once dotted the area. The Chinese slept and worked right there while the other employees lived in Furnace Creek Ranch down the road. The financial problems of William T. Coleman and the borax discovered in other parts of California caused the operation to shut down in 1888 after five years of operation. So as we walk back to the car, if you see the parking lot, it's not that full. What have we got? Eight, nine cars, a couple of people riding bikes. They probably are at Stovepipe Wells. And uh, it's not crowded at all. Of course it is midweek, so it's a Wednesday. So that'll go to show you if you come midweek, probably have less people than if you come on the weekends. Now this is the Furnace Creek Visitor Center. This is closer to the Las Vegas side. And uh, if you come in from the California side, there's no visitor center to, to get to. It's 75 degrees today. 24 Celsius. The temperature of Death Valley always plays an important role in every visit. Time for her to shop again. She's got a shop. There you go. There's also a movie to tell you what you should see in Death Valley. It plays from 8.30 to 4 p.m. Shows every 30 minutes. Only leaving its borough in the relative cool of the desert. Land. Furnace Creek. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and then it goes to the um, Mesquite Flat to Yuba Heath, uh, Scotty's Cashel, Dante's, Charcoal Kills, uh, the Wild Rose Peak, and the Telescope Peak, right? Yeah. For every thousand feet higher, there's five degrees cooler in Fahrenheit and forth. 300 meters is three degrees cooler in Celsius. Okay. If you enjoyed our vlog, please subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget to give us a like. It lets us know you care. Subscribe and we'll see you on our next adventure.